the stellar talents in the world of World Tour Racing. We've got some of the top teams from Pro Tour, some continental pretenders, a couple of national squads all in the mix in what is one of the most enjoyable races on the Spanish calendar each year. It's a one-day race of 192 kilometers in total. It's on the UCI Europe Tour at 1.1 level. And you join us with just over 60K left in what has been another enthralling edition of this uh, venerable classic and this highly prestigious race it's a one-day event, plenty of climbing. It's a pretty choppy sawtooth profile, so definitely one that suits the uh, climbers. It all tends to uh, come to a conclusion uh, on what is uh, a pretty testing one-kilometer climb to the finish. And at the moment, as you join us and uh, pick up live pictures, we're on the descent of the third climb of the day. It's the uh, premier category ascent of the uh, Guerguiano. They've got that one out of the way and the big breakaway group of 14 riders that was out front for most of the day has been neutralized under the uh, combined efforts of the Movistar squad who've been pushing along on the front Nero Quintana is in there in the mix and he's done his duty as well to try and drag this one back and make sure that a proud tradition from the Movistar uh, squad they at least have the opportunity to continue that they didn't have a rider in the breakaway group of 12 plenty of the other major teams were represented in that move very dangerous indeed and that has made for a very very difficult uh, day out for the riders so far it's absolutely balmy spring sunshine perfect weather for racing not too warm not too cold and uh, perfect conditions under wheel they've certainly been enjoying the racing so far but it's been pretty leg breaking stuff and up that last climb just a few moments ago there were plenty of riders of uh, somewhat lesser climbing ability uh, than the riders on screen that were jettisoned no doubt uh, left to their own devices and left to their fates because up front the big teams are starting to push on led by uh, team sky who ha had a rider in the break the uh, uh, veteran Zabio, uh, Xavier Zandio, 39 years young. And now the breakaway group has been towed back, so they are, uh, well, it's split a bit on the hill. And it'll be interesting to see what happens in the next uh, 10 or 15 kilometers. They've got another climb to do. They've got five classified climbs uh, in total today, plus that climb up uh, to the finish line. And the uh, next climb comes, well, within the next... Uh, 10 or 15 kilometers they'll hit the hit the bottom of it and they'll know all about it i say 10 or 15 because uh, well they're never <laughs> they're either going up or they're going down in this part of spain we're in the northwest of the country in the navarra region and the, heading towards the beautiful village of estella absolutely gorgeous medieval town and on the front, Team Sky doing what they can to protect the interests of their leading riders. Alongside me to survey the scene and run the rule over the uh, riders and teams throughout the afternoon is uh, Brian Smith. And so far, Brian, it's been pretty interesting fare. As I say, that 12-rider uh, group, maximum advantage of three minutes, but they felt they had to use, neutralize it pretty early. Well, we've just been over the uh, first category climb, the only uh, first category climb in this... Uh, you know, in the uh, the parkour, so you know the bunch is split up quite considerably. Uh, you can see the uh, this is what the uh, the peloton are. Uh, so the peloton are uh, chasing this down. Wacom Rodriguez is there with his Katusha uh, boys in red. Just at the front there, you can see that uh, Oric uh, Green Edge trying to chase it back. About 11 riders in front. Sky are in a happy place because they've got Kirienka pushing it on with uh, Sergio Hanau in that uh, front group. The sky well represented with some very strong legs indeed at the front, clearly going well. And they're chasing groups uh, throughout the, well, throughout the mountainside. A couple of representatives of the Spanish national squad, riders who would be uh, pretenders to the throne of Spanish cycling and have been given their opportunity to race against some big names this afternoon. And they'll, uh, they'll be pretty confident and happy to have got a couple of guys uh, into this chase group being led by Orica Greenedge and Orica Greenedge of course uh, is this a group a little bit further back yeah it's, another, it's a group even further back so it really has uh, split to bits it's in smithereens as a result of that uh, first category ascent of the Gorgiano it's a 2.4 kilometer climb but pretty steep pretty difficult and it's a pretty difficult time 
indeed for uh, Zavala, just who Zavala of the Spanish national selection desperately trying to hang on. Third group on the road now, we're getting the indication, it was indicated as uh, the second group, now it's the third group, and that's confirmation. And I wonder if those riders are going to see the front of the race to again today. Seems a little unlikely, you'd have to say, at this point. It's the Grand Premio Miguel Indrain for 2016, the 60th edition of this event, uh, named after one of the great names in Spanish cycling, five-time Tour de France winner Miguel Indrain, a man who won this race himself back in 1987. And you join us at a moment when the uh, hammer is really down in a big way. We are up the second classified climb of the day on the descent and heading towards another climb coming up in the next uh, what uh, 10 or 15 kilometers the alto Irao, which will be traversed on a couple of occasions heading towards the uh, finishing town of uh, estella where the riders headed out this morning 17 teams in total i can tell you that's uh, a lot less than that now there's a couple of Orica Green Age riders on the front of this group. That's the chasing group. And Sky have got some representatives into the front group, which is uh, fast disappearing up the road. So it's a danger moment for this uh, chase group. They desperately are trying to get back in contention. And some riders just getting back on after the descent. As we uh, pick up riders on the front of the race. And uh, pretty impressive that the... Domogalski from One Pro Cycling, who was in the early break of uh, 14 riders that was clear for much of the afternoon, was picked up on the ascent. And some leading riders from the chase pack, chasing pack, which was uh, led by Movistar for much of the afternoon. They did lots of the chase work to close down that group of 14 riders. And now uh, Vasil Kirienka et al. from Sky Pro Cycling are looking after uh, the job of towing these riders home towards Estea this afternoon. Still 56.1 kilometers to go. This race traditionally has been a bit of a carve up over the last 10 years between the Katusha and Movistar squads. They supplied uh, most of the riders in the top 10 12 months ago. On that occasion, the victory taken by Angel Vicioso, his third win in this race, making him a joint record holder. And uh, worrying times for the Orica Green Edge group led uh, uh, that are chasing behind. 35 seconds, Brian, can you see them getting back on? It's going to be very difficult. Uh, this is uh, Michael Matthews now uh, having to do a bit of chasing on his own. He came here as a, a leader, and you can just see, um, you know, one of the Yates brothers is in here. Adam Yates is also uh, just uh, further down the line. So it does look as if uh, they've decided that uh, Adam Yates is the um, favoured rider. This is uh, one of the uh, back groups in the road, but um, a good good bit of riding uh, in the front by one pro cycling with Dom Uh He was in the original breakaway, about 13 uh, riders. The reason the race is split up, we've just been over a first category climb, split to pieces, and it was uh, Kirienka uh, that uh, led over the top of that climb. Dom was in second place there. So Dom has already won uh, the first uh, King of the Mountains, second in the next, so obviously trying to stay in this group, but uh, Team Sky happy with this, they have three members in this group, I think it's about 11 riders, but uh, Orica Green Edge have missed out in the party in the front by 38 seconds, and they're now chasing us down. Yeah, we're only about 5k from the base of the next hill, and Sky pushing on as well, you might expect. Amit Chiruka picked out in that third group on the road, he was seventh in this race 12 months ago, and has moved over to Orica Green Edge this year, and he would have uh, been expecting to at least be able to help uh, Adam Yates or perhaps uh, even look after his own interests on that finishing hill, but he'll be lucky to get there uh, within touching distance of the leaders, the way things are going at the moment. Almost 40 seconds advantage, Kirieka is calling for reinforcements. Yeah, and it's uh, Movistar. Movistar have uh, three riders in this front group as well. Uh, one of the riders towards the back uh, for uh, Movistar is uh, Visconti, but uh, way of this race is it's only a kind of stone's throw away um, to the, the major headquarters of the Movistar team in Pamplona. 
So that's why they come to this race. They want to to kind of try and kind of dominate this race. And over the last uh, few years, they have done. They've had plenty of uh, good places, and they've won it. Last year, they were beaten by, uh, as you say, the Katusha with Vicioso. As you can see, the red jerseys of Katusha. They've got uh, a couple of riders in this uh, group as well. Not prov not. Um, Really wanting to write because we did know that um, Joaquin Rodriguez is with another three teammates in the second group behind at 41 seconds now. But it seems to be the uh, world time trial champion from Team Sky, Kirienka, that's doing all the damage here alone. Well, it's a hell of a job he's doing at the moment, towing this one on, along on his own. The rest uh, content to watch an amazingly strong rider at his work, and he is uh, doing a solid job of holding off that chase. Rodriguez cut behind the uh, 2010 winner of this event for Katusha, a man who could do the good result, really. It's been a little bit of a slow start to the season uh, for the man they call Perito, and Rodriguez, now 36 years of age, would perhaps have been looking to the Grand Premio Miguel Injurain for an opportunity to... Uh, open his uh, account for the season he'll do well now at this point 39 seconds still a long way to go though and it's an interesting point and it's it's, a, it's balanced on a knife edge here between the, the opportunity for the riders to get back in or will they just leave it to Kirienka will he alone be able to uh, hold them off behind because they're sharing the workload Plenty of, uh, I won't say panicking, controlled panicking going on behind. Yeah, but the top of the next climb comes 46.9 uh, kilometres. So for argument's sake, um, you know, in six kilometres, they'll be at the top. Marino Mosa is there for Cannondale. Uh, you can see a, a little bit further down, Kaharu Al, but uh, two riders in there from Katusha. And that's uh, Cillin, um is there, uh, Cherneski is there, and, and obviously they're not riding on the front. So... Katusha don't seem to be very happy with this situation and it's kind of stalemate at the moment between the two groups still about 39 40 seconds they're heading towards the next climb of the day a uh, very interesting development group going clear will they hang on find out just over 50 kilometers remaining in the Grand Premio Miguel in Jiren. you're looking at a lone chaser out of the uh, chasing group and desperate to get back into contention with the a group of leaders led manfully by Vasil Kirienka of Team Sky, Jose Gonsalves of the Cajo Rural squad. He's trying to winch himself across that gap. It'll be a very impressive job if he does it. And they're approaching the next climb of the day. Here out. Not too long, bit of a short, sharp shock. But it comes uh, at a critical moment in this race with the chasers behind, desperate to try and get back into contention. Worrying moments with another climb to come. And now, at last, a little bit of help for Vasil Kirienka. This is Izagir. Trying to give a bit of a hand and trying to eliminate as many as possible. It's two Izagirs, of course. This is the, uh, the younger brother, Gorka Izagir. Jan Izagir, his uh, brother, will be one of the favourite riders uh, for Team uh, Movistar, finished second 12 months ago. And on the Lausanne, Category 2 climb, there are the stats. 10% at its maximum, and that uh, is going to be a little bit of a killer for the riders. So now Movistar have decided to put a little bit of uh, work into this into this effort to haul this group clear. They're satisfied with the riders they've got up there and a great opportunity for them. Yeah, they've got options in the group behind, but why, you know, while they've got uh, three riders in this group of uh, Visconti, uh, both Izagiri, uh, Gorka and uh, Jon. Um, also Team Sky, have got Kirienka, who really pulled this out to, you know, almost uh, 40 seconds. So they've got Henao and Zandio. So it's... You know, last year, it, uh, you know, this race normally kind of splits up. Um, it's very possible someone with a good sprint, but you also, as a, a rider, can get over climbs and kind of sprint well at the end, you know, quite explosive. So it's a, a very difficult climb. We're on this, um, this next climb, it comes, uh, the top comes just under uh, 47 kilometres to go. And then we get a, a little bit of a respite. We get a, a sprint point at 27.7. And then the final climb comes with 9.4 kilometres to go. So um, Jose Concalves for Carreau, they've already got a rider in the front group of 11 riders. He's on his own. 
but it's going to be very difficult to uh, come across uh, on your own. Uh, it'd be better possibly waiting for the group behind. Still seems to be led by Orica Green Edge, but uh, I don't think Katusha, the two riders in here are Selin and uh, Chernetsky. They don't seem to be happy with this situation. I think uh, Rodriguez has got three other teammates with him in the group behind, so whether they'll help uh, the likes of uh, Orica Green Edge, we do not know. But the riders in the 11 man breakaway does include Kirienke Henao Zandio of uh, Team Sky, Visconti, Gorka, and Jan, Izagiri, Celine Chineski of uh, Katusha, Moreno Moses there in for. Um, Cannondale. Tom Magalski doing a, a terrific ride today. Already first and second in the uh, two of the King of the Mountains. Uh, should be should be uh, leading that competition at this moment. And uh, one other rider from Akaru I will still have to kind of pick up. But this is the Peloton. It swelled slightly, but it does look as if the uh, Orica Green Edge riders are still towards the front. So some reinforcements have joined that second group on the road. Is that an indication that they've got some uh, extra legs that will help them in the chase? Or is it a worrying sign that they really weren't making great progress on the riders up front? And indeed were chased by riders who uh, suffered on the previous climb. They'll be hoping that it is the former, not the latter, because Arica Green Edge have certainly missed a trick here. A little bit concerned. Uh, playing a watching brief is Cannondale Pro Cycling Team because they've got Moreno Moser in the group up front. Sky well represented as Brian has just pointed out. Eno is there, Kirienka and Zandio, who was in the early break, 39 years of age, but he is a great ally. And if he still has any, uh, any level of strength, then he'll certainly be a big asset in the uh, final part of this race. Arica Green Edge, certainly a worried team at the moment. They came to this race, well, with high hopes, uh, with Adam Yates on board, winner of San Sebastian last year. And Amos Chiruk, as I've mentioned a little earlier, finished seventh in this race 12 months ago. Clearly, it's a race that suits him. Back then, he was in uh, Caja Rural colors, and they do have representatives up front. And indeed have a, a chaser trying to come across. Team Movistar looking good at the moment. Both is a gears. And Visconti, double Italian road race champion and a man who knows how to uh, find his way to the finish at the head of a group. So they've got uh, decent riders, riders of real ability as they hit this other climb. Yeah, Team Sky and uh, Movistar combining well together. Uh, the other teams represented just kind of sitting back, as I've already mentioned. The rider in green, or the dark green, sorry, uh, the lighter green is uh, Moreno Moser, but uh, Balbao is the rider for uh, Kaharo Al. So 11 riders still in front. Katusha aren't happy with it. They're two riders of Selin and Chineski just sitting at the back, pressure on the peloton. And, you know, you look at the uh, peloton now, you know, when Kirienka was at the front, he pulled it out alone to within about 40, uh, 40 seconds. So that's now increased because Movistar are starting to ride with Team Sky in front. So. You know, they're looking for, for options, but unfortunately for the likes of um, uh, Orica Green Edge, they're losing a rider at front of the peloton. They're three there, now they have two on this very difficult climb. Still in between the gap is uh, Concalves of uh, Kaharu out, and a terrific ride, but it could be all for uh, nothing in the end. Yeah, it's a brave ride, no doubt about it, but for uh, Goncalves, it's surely uh, a little bit of a folly. Is there any chance that he can possibly uh, get himself across? Seems unlikely to our eyes, but uh, well, he certainly feels the passion, and he's pushing hard. And the rider's already starting to get dropped on this climb. The Lausanne, just to uh, clarify that, 3.9 kilometres in total. And the uh, summit will be reached, uh, according to the road book, well within another half a kilometre for the leaders up front. 110 now to the second group behind, so they're not making any inroads. Great work being done by Izagir and Kirienka on the front of the uh, the leaders. And it, uh, just an interesting point there, Brian. The two Katusha riders, they're well represented in the move, but you're, you, they're not satisfied with it? No, they're not satisfied. Chineski and Salim, both are uh, very good riders, but... Um I don't think they're, they're happy, otherwise they'd be riding. Um, are they capable of winning the race? Yeah, I think they are, but they seem to be um, thinking, well, you know, Rodriguez and, and possibly, 
you know, uh, Vicioso, who won it last year, maybe in the group behind. So, you know, to be out uh, numbered here, to have two riders, uh, three riders, uh, two teams with three riders in it, it doesn't really suit us. The, the rider that's doing the ride of today so far is the rider number 72 in the back in the original breakaway. Still here in this front group of uh, 11 riders, taking um, the first King of the Mountains today. Finished second behind Kirienko over the top of the first category climb where the race all split apart. So he's hanging in the back there. And it's still uh, Gorka Izagiri and uh, Kirienka setting the pace at the front. We're in the Navarra region in northwest Spain, just on the border with the Basque Country. Beautiful sunshine. It's uh, never looked as well, really. We're heading towards the medieval town of Estella. Population 14,000, and it lights up once a year for Grand Premio Miguel Indurain. It's had this uh, nomenclature since just the uh, first year, well, 1999, I believe, was the first time they called it uh, thus. Previously, it went under various different uh, monikers. Campeonato Vasco Navarro de Montana, it was known as back in 1951, when Hortensio Vidaretta took the first of his three wins. Three wins is the maximum. Several riders have uh, managed the trick. Juan Fernandez back in the uh, late 70s and early 80s. And as we've mentioned, Angel Vicioso rolling back the years to take his third victory 12 months ago. Sorry just to interrupt here. We are just mentioning uh, Domagowski, number 72. Uh, we're nearing the top of this climb, and so he's uh, he's wanting to take some more mountain points. And he goes over the climb in front of Kirienka, who just takes a sip. And <laughs> Throws a little bit of water on him. Maybe wasn't so happy with that, but at the end of the day, I think he's doing a right. He's in a obviously a second division team. He's taking the first king in the mountains. Uh, Kirienka beat him in the first category climb, and over the top of this climb, he's uh, taking maximum points. And obviously, he wants to try and get on the podium, which would be a, a good, a nice feat for him and uh, Team One Pro Cycling. Super effort by Karol Domogalski, the One Pro uh, rider from Poland. 26 years of age, 18th overall in the uh, Tour of Lankawi this year, so clearly not phased by steep hills and uh, not cowed by World Tour company either. In this the is early another break so and decided to hang on. Sorry, uh, Declan, this is another rider from uh, this part of the world, um, Amit Sharuka. Uh, the uh, the bass rider. In fact, you know when he was riding, I think he was riding with uh, Kaharu Al last year. Kaharu, this is their home region. Navarro is the home region for Kaharu Al, and we just seen uh, Concalves come back there. The reason why he kept it going so much is because this is their home. You know they, they want to show well. They've got Bilbao in the breakaway, but um, you know Amish Saruka just takes them over the top there. Uh, 107 it was when they crested, and uh, still a long way to go. Some riders kind of hanging on the back, but. Um, it's in the balance now, uh, 45.7 kilometres a minute. It can easily be brought back, but with only one team chasing and uh, only uh, two riders, I think it's Churuka and uh, Yul Jensen at the front for, for uh, Adam Yates, it's going to be very difficult uh, to bring this back now. It needs more impetus uh, from the chase behind, and possibly Katusha might get involved if they keep the gap down. A little bit of decision-making required one thinks from the peloton the peloton has swelled inside they have got the numbers so if there is a union of the uh, riders back there and the teams that uh, aren't represented up front decide to get form a bit of a coalition well there's still every chance that uh, some of those riders still could contest the finish at the moment though riders out front led by Kirienka. and what a great job he's doing over a minute now clear with 45 kilometers to go well, they're piling it on. They've got plenty of company, but are those riders willing to get involved? Because this chase group is over a minute behind the leaders up front and charging towards victory. Big question mark about that. Still a long way to go in the Grand Premio. Miguel Indurain for 2016. This is the uh, chase group, the main peloton, or what's left of it at this point, after the three tough climbs that they've had and all the other ups and downs in this region of Spain, in the Navarre region, and it is testing climbing country and what a great visual representation of the gap there is there as the uh, break up front absolutely lined out under the combined efforts of Gorka Izagir and to a large extent the world uh, time trial champion Vasil Kirienka of Team Sky he's got two teammates behind him and Izagir also has two so it's all about uh, Team Sky and Movistar they're the very motivated teams 
that really want to try and drag this one clear and keep it clear all the way to the line in Estea. Still, they've got to go through the town and out for another loop. And they've got one more classified climb before they get to that finishing hill. The finishing hill is just about a kilometer long. And it's a testing one. Mostly 7% up to the finish line and then within the last couple of hundred well that's 300 meters just ramps up to 15 percent and really takes the wind out of your sails after a long day in the saddle 190 just under 192 kilometers of racing for the riders this afternoon it's not the longest race they ride but it is pretty hilly and for a lot of riders that's at the limit of their endurance the riders from the uh, continental squads are certainly going to feel the difference the distance for uh, kirianke and co well it's a light jog in uh, April sunshine, but it is uh, certainly well within his compass and his, uh, his ability in terms of uh, being able to get maximum distance out of his legs. 42.4 as we run through the riders in the breakaway group. The Isagare brothers are there, so Movistar well represented. One of them, of course, second 12 months ago for Team Movistar. Yates behind, feeling a little bit uh, concerned, I would have thought, at this moment. Navardowskis moving up the line for uh, Team Cannondale. Cannondale not minded to help out. They've got Moreno Moser uh, up in the group ahead, so they've got that card to play. Is Moser capable of duking it out with the rest of the riders in the break when they come to the finishing climb? I think he is, but obviously outnumbered. Um, but if he, you know, he rides well and rides intelligently, which we know he can do, he's he's very capable of winning. But you know, we've got uh, three riders uh, riding this breakaway down of our eleven. The eleven riders are Kirienka, who's who's doing all the damage in the front. You know what? A, a, you know, Stellan performance he's done. He went to the front in that first category climb, split the race up completely. And uh, now he's, he's towing these 11 riders and, and holding off the peloton led by three uh, Orica Green Edge uh, riders uh, alone. Pretty much Gorka Izaguirre is giving him a, a little bit of help, but uh, Hugh Carthy just going through the, the uh, caption there, uh, the picture there with uh, uh, from uh, Kaharu Al, who had a terrific ride recently in uh, Vuelta Catalonia. But the 11 riders in the breakaway, Kirienka, Henao, Zandio of Team Sky. Uh, Movistar have got uh, Vicio. Um, um, Visconti, uh, both the Zagheri brothers, Gorka and Jon, uh, two from Katush in the red, Selin and Chenevsky. Uh, Bilbao's there for Kaharu Al, and the, uh, the dark green and the kind of lighter fluorescent kind of green is uh, Marino Moser. But I think for me, the rider of the uh, day so far is uh, one pro cyclist, Dom Agalski, uh, who's um, won, you know, there's four King of the Mountains today. He's won two, finished second just to uh, Kirienka, the first category climb. So we'll be seeing him later on the, on the podium. Uh, let's hope he can top this performance off in the King of the Mountains with a, you know, a good finish uh, result as well, which uh, I think uh, most fans of, uh, all fans of uh, One Pro Cycling will be loving this and seeing uh, Karol Domagowski uh, dominate that King of the Mountains competition so far. And uh, let's hope he can, uh, you know, pull off a, a very good result and, and finish uh, in the top 10 today. Well, there he is, the One Pro Cycling yeah, team car by Phil West up towards the front and some well-deserved sustenance for Domogalski who takes his position back at the back of the breakaway group. He won't be doing too much work as w and that's perfectly he understandable. Have to do anything. He's been yeah. in the break all day and picking up King of the Mountain so he just has to stay there. The next climb, as you said, comes the top of it comes 9.4 kilometres to go so he just has to stay there uh, try and get some points but after that uh, he has to really start thinking about how he can get a result. It's going to be very difficult up against, um, you know, the three riders from um, Movistar and three from Team Sky, two from uh, uh, Katusha. But you know that um, Kirienka and uh, Gorka Izagheri are, are using up, you know, with 11 in the breakaway, they're using up. So a top 10 performance is, is doable, uh, plus the king of the mountains for uh, Domagowski, possible ticks, top six if he, he plays it uh, right. Still 39 kilometres to go. This gap is controllable, given the numbers behind, but there's, uh, it's not really going in the right direction for the peloton at the moment. So a few decisions need to be made. We're on one of the... Uh, little downward bits at the moment and the group behind are starting to make uh, little inroads but that group up front driven along by Kirienka with a little bit of help from his Movistar friends and 
Team Katusha have managed to infiltrate this move. Igor Silin is there. Yeah, that's uh, Silin at the uh, the back, and this will be this will be helping the chase behind because Chernesky and Silin, two very good riders, and you don't want to really be dragging them to the finish. Bob Bao for Kaharuao, another uh, very good rider. So that's why you know that's why it's it's difficult to to increase uh, the gap it's a 110 now it's just kind of hovering around 110 115 is coming down to 109 now but um it's only two riders that are riding predominantly uh, it's uh, kirienka on his own so kirienka you know obviously we know he, he raised like 10 men so great rider to have in the breakaway but this race is just in a still in the balance three riders from uh Orica Green Edge, I uh, believe it's uh, Churuka, it's uh, uh, towards the front, Yul Jensen, and I think it's um, Christian Meyer also getting involved with the uh, the chase, and they're trying to help um, Adam Yates uh, to try and uh, bring this back, but it's going to be very difficult. Three riders for Orica Green Edge at front of the peloton, holding the gap to a Kirienka-led 11-man group, but the, um, you know, the action still hasn't happened. You know, we're still... You know, got 37 kilometres to go. There's still plenty of action to be had, but you can see the number of kind of red jerseys behind. Wacken Rodriguez is in there with three of his other teammates. They're just playing a cam at the moment. They're not getting involved with the uh, the chase, and, and plus they've got two riders in the break, so they're just sitting pretty at the moment, and they're hoping that the Orica Green Edge can keep this gap round about one minute. Yeah, other teams are in there, but uh, not too many because uh, plenty of teams represented up front. Those teams that are uh, back there. Well, they're not willing, they're either unwilling or unable to get involved, Celine, for uh, Katusha, as we've explained. Katusha have a couple of heavy hitters behind. Angel Vicioso, the reigning champion, three-time winner of this race, has missed out. And so too, uh, Joaquin Rodriguez, another former winner and uh, Spanish favourite. So, well, their local men haven't managed to infiltrate the move. And you suspect that the, uh, the thinking on the team bus this morning might have been... Uh, directed towards the likes of Vicioso and Rodriguez, but still it is Silin and Chernetsky that are representing Team Katusha up front. It's actually Michael Matthews that's riding on, on the front, so Michael Matthews, Chiruka and Neil Jensen, so three riders, and you know, it's coming down, and uh, I would think that for Churuka, Yul Jensen and Michael Matthews, it's, you know, their race is going to be over when we hit this final climb. This final climb, the top of it comes with 9.4 to go. So they've only got um, probably 25 kilometres of effort, and then that's it. So probably been told in the rear that, um, you know, they have to write this down as, as, as much as possible. Get it. Even if they get it within, you know, 20 seconds, 30 seconds, uh, Adam Yates can probably, you know, go across in this final climb. So their job now will be finished at the bottom of this uh, final climb. Another one of these uh, stunning local villages in this Navarra region, playing host to some frenetic, epic racing. And I think we're going to see another big shake-up coming within the next 25 kilometers, as uh, Brian has outlined there. Surely the uh, composition of the breakaway group will not be as it is when they hit uh, the base of the final climb. In Estea, at the end of 191 kilometers, it's time for a little bit of uh, afternoon lunch for the riders up front. Still some racing to be done. Join us for the rest of it after these. Well, the gap has reduced to 53 seconds. It was uh, down as low as 45 seconds a few minutes ago under the... Uh, well, the incredible impetus of Michael Bling. Matthews of Orica Green Age is chasing this group. who are up front in Grand Premio, Miguel Ingerain. As uh, Visconti now makes his way to the front and Team Movistar and Team Sky are combining their forces, putting more riders on the front after that great effort by Vasil Kirienki. He's uh, gone to the back of the group to uh, take a breather or perhaps even disappear because uh, while well, the road is going up once more, is this group going to be whittled down? We'll find out very shortly. So Team Sky and uh, Team Movistar working well together. They're putting their combined forces onto the front of the group as uh, Team Katusha continue to watch behind. It's nervous glances over their shoulder because uh, the group, the chasing group, the peloton behind, now less than a minute behind. 
Michael Matthews absolutely burying himself, giving his last, bringing it down to 45 seconds. It's got back out of it a little bit in the last few moments as Visconti really piles it on on the front of the uh, lead group up front. So the uh, battle is joined in no uncertain terms. There's a hell of a scrap out on the roads of the Navarra region for the honours in uh, this year's Grand Premio, Miguel Ingerain. Will this group manage to hang on? Well, they've just... Uh, one more classified climb to go. And then they head up that final climb that uh, arrives inside the final kilometre. Lots of uh, tough racing to be done before they get to it, but the uh, gap has come down less than a minute, so nervous moments for the group up front. Vichoso and Rodriguez. Vichoso, the old man now, began his career in 2000. Old man is uh, relative terms, of course. He's still a very young man at 38 years of age, but in uh, sporting terms, coming to it's the end of his career, you would expect. And Perito is also uh, 36 years of age. So Katusha have a couple of old stagers who the crowd would like to see uh, come up with a decent result this afternoon. And Maxim Belkov is still there. He was in the break early on. He got caught, uh, but he's managed to hang on with the peloton. So a good solid effort from him. And be interesting to see whether Katusha feel the need to chase at the moment. They're happy to leave it up to uh, Chris Yul Jensen of Team Arica Greenedge. Certain frustration from, was that Navardowskis? Uh, Team Cannondale believe that that uh, lead motorbike needs to go on and not provide any assistance uh, to the chase because, uh, well, Team Cannondale have a, represented, a representative in the group up front in the shape of Moreno Moser. Yeah, we see this happening uh you know, far too often these days with the uh, the camera bike, he's coming back again. And I was just looking at it uh, from behind when we were looking at Joaquin Rodriguez, the, the camera bike in front. And, you know, the rider in front of the peloton will just follow that bike. And even in this position now, he's still getting a, a little bit of uh, benefits. Unfortunately, Domagowski has been dropped from that 11 man uh, group just in that acceleration and that climb. And he's uh, coming back, but still, ride of the day so far. You know, two King of the Mountains, second in the other. Does look as if he'll uh, take that uh, King of the Mountains uh, crown on this, in this uh, edition of the uh, Grand Prix Miguel Injurin. So it's been a good uh, performance, but unfortunately just found it a little bit difficult in that last drag. But saying that, Orica Green Edge came to the front, really used up Michael Matthews. He went, he came to the front, he brought it down to, I think it was about 44 seconds. And then, um, you know, uh, Movistar and the breakaway came to the front, especially uh, Visconti, and had to push hard up that climb, and that's where Domagowski was, uh, was dropped. And the pressure has pushed it out again to just over a minute. But I'm thinking, well, you know, Michael Matthews really brought that back down pretty much on his own with that big turn. He swung to the side and then went straight out the back of the, the group. They're struggling still, still Yo Jensen uh, and uh, Suruka, uh, Ami Suruka, for now riding for Orica Green S, second third wheel, or sorry, fifth wheel. But constantly, and we see the wave, and constantly the motorbikes in front of the uh, race that are bringing these pictures, uh, you know, are uh, aiding the chase. And just as we say that, on to the next climb, and it looks as if Kerry Anker's uh, race is over as he drifts out the back. Well, great job from him and to take them to the base of this climb. It's not very long, it's only about uh, 600 metres or so but you can see it's a it's pretty short sharp and a hell of a shock to the system inside the final 30 kilometers Zeno on the left uh, of picture as we were watching a few moments ago dancing his way up the climb by contrast after what has been a very solid job for the team indeed Vasil Kirienka finds that uh, he's in big trouble uh, is that uh, is it gear or is it uh, Visconti entirely sure we'll wait to Visconti's get at the front of this uh, group uh, Declan yeah, now but Visconti's it's whistling away yeah. and uh, already you can see that uh, one of the Katusha riders is in a little bit of difficulty so Visconti kind of leading the way here he knows that uh, the pressure's on Tomogalski's picked up by the peloton Yates has gone to the front and he is uh, chasing hard and will he be able to leap across this gap well it's not exactly the work of a moment because the indication is that it's still well over a minute so hitting the base of the climb after uh, a manful effort still there was more than a minute and Adam Yates is a frustrated man at the moment looks like he's uh, gonna have the a bit of trouble company. the trouble here Declan is 
you know, he's used up his teammates. They weren't able to bring it down. Michael Matthews brought it down to about 44 seconds. It did go up. They were trying to bring it down quickly for Adam Yates to go across. Unfortunately for him in this next climb, uh, the gap was over a minute. So he's uh, not quite a few seconds off, but he's got one of the riders from uh, Movistar with him. Just behind, he's got uh, riders from uh, Cannondale. He's not going to get any help. Can he go over with uh, Daniel Moreno over this gap of uh, just under one minute to the riders in front? I think it's a, a, a huge ask of uh, Adam Yates. Belkov from the early breakaway finds himself at the back of the peloton. He'll do well to hang on in that group as Danny Moreno has accompanied Adam Yates on the chase across. It's going to be a big ask, but for Yates, uh, it to have a rider of the caliber of Danny Moreno for company, well, at least gives him a fighting chance. Moreno, of course, former winner of this race back in 2012. He's now 34 years of age, so definitely not in the first flush of his cycling youth. And now the gap is uh, seesawing again, goes back over a minute, as indicated. So no great headway made on that short, sharp shock of a climb. Yeah, the only thing it did do was uh, get rid of another two riders. So we've gone from 11, Domagowski uh, was unfortunately dropped. And then we've lost, uh, you know, one of the Izagiris uh, from the, the group, plus Kirienka. So it's still two against two for uh, Movistar. But now, you know, the riders in red from Katusha brought into play. So there's three teams in this front group of eight with two riders. Uh, the only other riders that are in this uh, group is Cannondale's Moreno Moza and Bilbao of Cajarual. They're just, you know, riding on the wheels, but it's difficult to ride on the wheels when you get these hard, hard climbs. But um, for Adam Yates with uh, Moreno Mo uh, with uh, sorry, um, in this group behind, we don't know if anybody else has uh, gone with them, but he has got um, uh, a former winner uh, with him uh, in, the, in the group behind, and it's going to be very difficult with uh, Dan, uh, Daniel uh, Moreno. He won't contribute because he's got two riders in front, so it's going to be very difficult for Yates uh, and Moreno to come across this gap. Sitting at 53 seconds, but it's going to be huge. Even if he does make it, it's going to be uh, difficult to recover because, as you know, uh, Declan, this race is up and down the whole time and it's going to be a very difficult finish. Is, is there any situation where uh, Movistar would uh, allow Moreno, you know, release him from the shackles no, because, and actually ask him to contribute? Because Adam's, uh, you know, in some of these instances, I would say Adam's main job now is to try and get to, you know, 20, maybe 30 seconds from this front group, but he has to do it alone. If he does that and gains enough time between himself and the group behind, then Movistar might think, yeah, okay, we uh, we start, we start we allow uh, Moreno to ride, that gives us three, that gives us the numbers yet again in front. So Moreno can make it three in front, okay, he brings Adam Yates, but let him do the majority of the work. At this moment in time, he isn't getting close enough. They're just about to, uh, to catch um, uh, Kirienka. I think it's going to be very difficult for Adam Yates to come across on his own with uh, Marino just sitting there. Like I say, if he gets to within 30 seconds and there's enough of a gap to the next group, then Movistar might play the card of allowing him to ride. But at this moment in time, it doesn't look as if that's going to happen. So you'd be tempted to pull him out of it uh, immediately? You don't or want Adam Yates going to cross. You do not want Adam Yates to go because he's a potential winner and he's riding strong, so you don't want to help him. So unfortunately for Adam, he's not got any allies between Kirienka and um, um, Moreno at the moment. So Kirienka slots in behind uh, for as long as he possibly can. It's been a great effort from him. Danny Moreno is uh, playing the dutiful team rider. Sense of frustration, you suspect, from Moreno. He's not going to contribute, but he would dearly, dearly love to at least be uh, offered the opportunity. And that is a significantly reduced group. 26.7 kilometers going hen owl now uh, striking out here so this is uh this is putting a lot of pressure and uh looked as if it's andy was uh now being dropped is it or is this uh hen owl yeah, being dropped? Now, sebastian now. so hen owl is now being dropped so um it does look as if um they're using up a lot of their cards at the moment uh, sebastian Aina has been dropped has been jettisoned And that uh, sense of frustration that Sky are not going to carry quite the numbers that they had hoped for through to the finishing climb.
this afternoon, but that's just giving you an indication of what a hectic day it has been for the riders in the saddle. Still over a minute to the chasers behind. Presuming that that uh, the group of chasers is Adam Yates. There's the significantly whittled down uh, group of chasers behind us. Still two Katusha riders in there. At what moment do they start betting on uh, the riders that they've got up front? Giovanni Visconti. In fact, it, um, the uh, numbers that have uh, been brought up to us before, it's actually Sergio Henao. So Henao is still in the, uh, in the front group here, but uh, his brother um, Sebastian has now been dropped. So um, when we said Zandia was the rider in the breakaway, that was the, uh, the wrong number that came to us. So um, we apologise for that, Kirienka and both Henao uh, brothers. So two sets of brothers were in the original breakaway. Isagiri and uh, Henao, unfortunately, um, they've lost one. Uh, one Isagiri and one uh, Henao from the uh, the breakaway. So it just means that um, everything for Team Sky today is for uh, Sergio Henao. Well, the gathering up numbers in this chase group behind, and Adam Yates must be well, feeling a little bit of heat on his collar because nobody's helping out. Tom Yelta Schlachter is well capable of uh, doing a decent ride ninth in this race last year. Pierre Roland, big move over to Cannondale this year. Yet to pay dividends. This could be the kind of race that he could uh, really kickstart his time with the Cannondale team. Adam Yates rolling the big gear. And I suspect that uh, he's doing a lot of thinking as well as uh, hard riding at the moment. Nobody willing to help. Those Cannondale riders have Moreno Moser ahead in the group. They're not going to help that. Danny Moreno's not going to help. He's got uh, plenty of Movistar representatives up front. And of course, Vasil Kirienke. Even if he could, I'm not so sure he could. Even if, uh, yeah, he certainly wouldn't. And I'm not so sure he actually can at this point. You know, the only other team that um, has to look at this is uh, Cannondale. And just to say that. Um, you know, Pierre Roland looks as if he's uh, providing, he wants to try and do something. They do have a rider in the front, uh, Moreno Moser. So, you know, we're down to only seven riders Moreno Moser, Salin, and Cherneski of uh, Katusha. Um, but it's, it's going to be, um, you know, very difficult for anybody to infiltrate into this group now. They seem to be working a little bit better now. Uh, Sky had three, now they've only got uh, one rider, and that's um, Sergio Henao. His uh, brother Sebastian has uh, was dropped in his previous climb, but this is the second group on the road. Adam Yates does look as if he's getting a little bit of help from uh, Schlachter and uh, Pierre Roland of Cannondale, but as I said, a little bit of help. They aren't uh, seemingly keeping the pressure on. So Schlachter's on the blower. He's trying to find out what they should be doing at this moment. They've got Moser up front. Do they bet entirely on Moreno, Moreno Moser? With riders of the ability of Tom Yelta, Schlachter and Pierre Roland behind, it might be worth trying to chase across. Roland certainly thinks so. He's not uh, asking at the moment. Schlachter, though, is going back to his team car. Well, we're in the business end of Grand Premio Miguel Indurain for 2016. The uh, peloton behind, well, have been left to their own devices. Third group on the road uh, now, two minutes and 20 seconds behind. One minute, 11 is the arrears of the group led by Adam Yates of Arica Greenedge, who's a little bit further up the road, and the lead group still driving along and in control, heading towards the final climbs of the day. So uh, one pro cycling have had a great day out. Tomogalski is still hanging on for what uh, will be a very, very solid result in a big 1.1 UCI race. Great performance by uh, one pro cycling. James Oram and uh, Domogalski are in the third group on the road, but uh, looking up front and surveying the scene, well, Sebastian Einau has managed to get back to the leading group, so his uh, cousin, not his brother, his cousin Sergio Einau is in there as well, so two riders from Team Sky and two riders from Katusha as well who've managed to box clever and save their energy as best they possibly can for this business end of the race. The chasing group behind now at 1 minute and 12 seconds. The big impetus there coming from Adam Yates and 
well, fits and starts of help from some of the other riders in that group. They're not entirely sure what they should be doing. There's some very heavy hitters indeed in that chase group, but they've got representatives up the road. So some big, big decisions to be made. The peloton, you would suggest, are probably out of it at this stage, but still two minutes and uh, 18 seconds with just over 20K to go. I suppose it gives them a racer's chance of getting involved at the back end. Certainly, these riders up front can't think about uh, jockeying for position and trying to uh, finesse uh, there can be no gamesmanship at this moment. They still have to push on because there's a lot of... They've got to uh, consolidate that gap before they get to the point where they can, uh, they can start to race each other. And that was a great effort from Sebastian Aina, number 32, to get back onto the front of the group, and he's giving it all he can to the bottom of the next hill because he was dropped uh, the last time the road went up so the expectation i think is that uh, he'll suffer next time it goes up so sergio a now benefiting from the impetus and the effort of sebastian a now at the moment visconti at the back for team movistar they've got two in there team katusha have two in there three times two plus one each from uh, cannondale and gahar rural moreno moser and uh, Peo Bilbao, respectively, for those two squads. And that's your lead group up front. This, the chase group, won uh, just under one and a half minutes. And a uh, little shake of the thighs for Adam Yates, perhaps feeling the miles at this point. Yeah, it was a good effort. Unfortunately, the, uh, his team never got him close enough in that steep climb. As I said, getting within 20, 30 seconds, he would stood a, 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 an opportunity. Michael Matthews was doing some uh, huge turns, but um, you know to hit the bottom of this climb over a minute uh, behind, and uh, it was always going to be um, a difficult uh, situation for Adam Yates at the back here to go, go across the gap. He tried to go away, but you know Cannondale, uh, you know, want to keep this rolling along, but it's going to be just rolling along. The two riders from uh, Movistar, one uh, Danny Moreno went with Adam Yates, one was dropped. Gorka Zagiri, uh, number uh, 18. Uh, Kiri Enka. So, you know, these are the the eight riders that are in front, and it's already proven today that they are the, the strongest riders. They went away uh, originally 11 riders on the first category climb. Uh, they've used up some of their teammates, but, you know, it looks as if uh, Team Sky want to kind of control this. Movistar have got two riders. Katusha, are they, are they, they, they kind of silence in the breakaway because they, the two of them, we, uh, the red jerseys on, Silin and Chernetsky, have done nothing whatsoever. Uh, Moser is a danger in the, uh, the green of uh, Cannondale. Fisconti looks probably, uh, you know, a big danger for uh, um, Sergio Hanau. Uh, but it seems to be uh, Sebastian, his cousin, uh, seem to be doing all the riding at the moment after being dropped in a previous climb. He's keeping the pressure on and, you know, just look at that time gap. It's gone up over uh, one and a half minutes now with uh, 18.5 kilometres to go. Sebastian Aino driving things on the front. There's uh, nothing like the same impetus behind from the chase group now. One and a half minutes plus five seconds behind and surely going south at this moment. Inside 20 kilometers to go. They're going to uh, duke it out between this group. Visconti at the back. He knows how to get to the finish line, doesn't he? He's uh, won a stage of Giro d'Italia in the past couple of uh, Italian national titles to his name. Fellow countryman Moreno Moser in the green of Cannondale, a little bit further ahead, and then the darker green and white colours of Caja Rural, represented by Peo Bilbao. Don't uh, mention much about him, but he's done well in this race in the past. Top 10 last year, 10th across the line. Just behind this man, Tom uh, Yelta Schlachter, a little bit of a split in the chasers. What's this all about? Pierre Roland, you sense, is not entirely on message with the uh, Cannondale decision not to chase Moser. Yes, a kind of frustrating group. Um, some of them want to go fast, some of them don't. Some of them have already done their, their job today. Um, so, you know, when riders get dropped, riders coming forward, you're always getting in a group where it gets a little frustrating and it, it seems to be getting a little frustrating for uh, Pierre Roland. And I'll say for, uh, for Adam Yates, he's tried to come across, but it's just not happening for him. Uh, and again, uh, Danny Moreno going over, uh, Kirienka pulling it all back. So this is this is the frustrating group in the middle. The uh, the race is in front, but this group here is got to, you know, after making you know, the efforts, it's okay for Kirienka. 
and Izagiri at the back because they've already been in the race and done their work. Uh, but it does look as if this group could actually be caught from the uh, peloton led by uh, one pro cycling behind. And, you know, obviously there's still a, an opportunity for some of the riders in the uh, peloton to get a top 10 today. Only eight riders in front. And it's no one's fault. It's just the way the tactics have played out. Yeah. The cards have fallen and uh, all the riders are doing what they're what they're told to do and what they're, what's expected Until of the them. next climb, it, you know, that group will split up because the weaker riders will be shaken out. But on the flats, uh, you know, it's easy enough to, to follow the wheels. One thing uh, uh, pro riders are good at is following wheels and it's very difficult to get rid of them. So even ex-pro riders, uh, when they're out in, you know, different chain gangs. But, you know, in these sort of roads, it's very difficult to, to get rid of anybody. And Adam Yates and Pierre Roland are trying to do that. They believe that they've still got a lot of punch in their legs to try and come across and make a race of it. Unfortunately, in this part of the course, they're going to have to wait to the next hill to make an acceleration and get rid of the, uh, the riders that they're with. But they're only less than 30 seconds in front of the uh, peloton now. Yeah, it's uh, looking increasingly likely that they're going to be caught by the group behind. Just make it two groups uh, that we're interested in seeing on the road. And I suspect uh, by the time we get to 10K to go, maybe even a little less than that, it may only be one group. This is surely going to split up inside the last 10 kilometers. And Sebastian Ena is going to leave everything, I think, in these, uh, in these next six or seven kilometers. He's going to see what he can do to try and set things up for Ser Sergio Ena. Has he got what it takes? That is the question. Which of this uh, group has the legs to take the victory in Grand Premio? Miguel Injure. When they arrive back into Estella, they've got to uh, wind and twist their way through the medieval streets. Then they've got that final kilometre, which, as I said, most of it is sort of a steady 7% with switchbacks. And then a little ramp up inside the last few hundred metres just to really test the legs. Then it sort of uh, levels out again inside the last uh, 50 or 100 meters by which time well there won't be too many left in contention and uh, very unlikely to be any of these riders because they're within 15 seconds of being caught and it's all done well adam yates he did his best he did his thing didn't he i mean he did what he could when he got to that last climb but he had just been presented uh, to the bottom of that climb by his Arca Green Edge team, just that little bit too far away from the group in front. A minute was too much of a deficit for him to close. Look, it's a, it's, it's a de very difficult thing to do um, when you're limited in your firepower, firepower behind as a team and you want to help, you know, your leader. Uh, what do you do? Do you, do you, you know, do you ride easier on the, on the climbs, keep it together and try and keep it within a minute? That's always, in this terrain, it's always, you know, when the the brake was coming back and Adam had to make a, a decision whether he tried to go and take a chasing group with him but unfortunately for him the, the, the chasers you know he's got Sky and Movistar in there it's not going to help him so unfortunately um, it's been the wrong tactic today it could be uh, a good tactic for another day uh, but at least he tried but unfortunately Adam wasn't there uh, when the selection was made in the uh, first category climb uh, whether he was going through a bad patch, some, sometimes uh, riders do this, but unfortunately, on this, since that last climb when uh, uh, Sebastian Henao was dropped and then he came back on, on this part of the course, this is where you do need your team uh, mates because you know you can sit in the front, you can do a little bit of work and bring, uh, bring the groups back in front because it's kind of stalemate at the moment. 16.9 uh, kilometers ago, two minutes. It's only one rider riding. It's only a uh, Sebastian Henao that's riding at the front now. What's Kerry Enka before? But just look at the time gap back to the peloton led by uh, one pro cycling, and it's been a, a top effort there. I think it's uh, James Oram. It uh, seems to be helping uh, Dom Magalski bring this, uh, this second group back together. Yeah, big result on offer for the peloton. OK, they're not going to be uh, duking it out for the... Uh, for the win in the race at this moment it looks like it's uh, all done the ticker not uh, clicking down the kilometers so i think there could be a little bit less than 16.9 kilometers to go maybe it's a long kilometer i don't but it feels long at the moment maybe it's an irish kilometer they all seem to be longer uh, you find the longer ones happen towards the end of a race i find yeah wow look at that epic scenery and uh, not a moment to take in any of it still 16.9 kilometers to go on pro cycling great effort and now they've picked up those chasers frustration for uh, adam yates frustration too you sense for pierre roland and danny moreno and those other riders caught in 
little bit of a tactical conundrum where they weren't really in a position to uh, chase uh, chase down their teammates up front, especially not with a rider of the danger and the caliber of uh, Adam Yates for company. That nice chase here uh, from uh, with Domagowski, again, one of the riders of the race so far, uh, taking the, uh, or looks to be taking the uh, King of the Mountains. Uh, already took two today, uh, plus second over the first category climb. So Domagowski uh, from Run Pro Cycling with his teammate there, uh, James Orham, is uh, riding at the front. Um, they want to try and keep it, um, you know, a reasonable gap and, and try and get a top 10 performance in a 1.1 level race. I uh, think they have got one rather rider in this uh, group, and that's uh, Dion Smith. So uh, they're possibly looking to have Dion Smith try and get that uh, ninth or 10th position because I can't see many riders, um, you know, coming across. But as we say, that one rider has been dropped. Another man dropped. Uh, great effort again from uh, Sebastian Einau. Not so sure he's going to get back a second time. He managed to just about uh, fight his way back towards the front. Gave what he could to make sure that they uh, reach this climb in uh, perfect condition. And now uh, we're starting to see the guns firing. Is this Visconti or is it Isagir? Visconti would be the uh, would be the guess, and that I do believe is the likelihood. And it's. The combined forces of Katusha, Silin Chernetsky lined up behind. They're on the front for the first time today, on the front of that group at least, trying to chase down former double Italian road race champion Giovanni Visconti, who's the first man to fire for Team Movistar. So the suspicion and the expectation is that they believe that Jan Izagir could be the man for them today. And Visconti has been sent on a leg softening up exercise. 12K to go is what we're uh, believing now. And we're given to understand as Visconti continues to pile it on. Giovanni Visconti hanging on to this advantage, and it's looking good at the moment. Has a little look over his shoulder. This is certainly one worth persisting with. He won't be chased by uh, by his teammate, as uh, we see Domogalski going out the back once more. James Oram is uh, coming back to give him a hand. He's watching the peloton disappear in the distance. What a great effort it's been from Domogalski. He's been in the break all afternoon, managed to hang on with the, uh, the big favourites when they came up to him for quite a while, quite a while longer than anyone else from the breakaway group. So a uh, solid effort from James Oram, but uh, he's watching this group jogging away in the distance, and that's uh, a little bit of frustration for him, frustration too for Maxime Belkov and uh, some of the other Katusha riders that they're not able to get involved in the chase of this man, which is Giovanni Visconti. And Visconti, well, he knows how to close one out, Brian. He is a danger man, and for, would have a... To have a bullet like that to fire first is a pretty good one. Yeah, and it's uh, putting pressure on the uh, the team of Katusha, one of the riders from the uh, Iskari Basque country, uh, disappearing, uh, or not say disappearing up the road. He was uh, rider Emmanuel Estevez, so he's attacking the uh, the peloton. But yeah, good effort from uh, Visconti. Uh, they've still got uh, Jan uh, Izagiri uh, in the group, uh, led by uh, Katusha, but it's putting a lot of pressure on uh, Katusha now uh, to try and uh, pull off the win. Having two riders in this uh, front group now whittled down to seven riders, and um, you know they have they have done very very little work in the front group, and uh, now the pressure is on them. Plenty of activity behind, but uh, have they left it too late? Now Katusha on the front with uh, Silin and Chernetsky. Up the road, Visconti is disappearing in the distance. Interesting that uh, Moreno Moser not minded to try and chase this one down. They've left it to Katusha, they've got the numbers. Sky now down to one rider. That is Sergio Eno, who might be feeling a little bit anxious at this moment. the front Igor Silin and Sergei Chernetsky just in his wake in the red jerseys of Katusha while uh, Giovanni Visconti charges up this hill this is the final climb before they hit the uh, the base of the finishing hill 
The thing is, is just over one kilometre to go to the top of this climb, and you think that uh, Sergio Hanau would be trying to use uh, the uh, Katusha riders as much as possible. Uh, they hope they will limit the gap and possibly try and uh, go over because if uh, Visconti goes over the top of this climb with um, you know 15, 20 seconds, he's going to be hard to be brought back. And it looks as if if uh, Chernetsky is using Cillian as much as possible. They've uh, they've left that rider on the front. Yeah, it does look as if um, uh, Chernetsky would be the rider. But just as we say that, um, it does look as if uh, uh, Cillian is now uh, struggling at the back of this group. So. Um, Janeski is on his own, but you know, this is a, a nice enough wee gap. There's some sore legs behind, and Movistar have got uh, Jan Isigeri uh, that can just sit on the wheel. So, tactically, uh, Movistar are looking uh, good. Well, Movistar still have two cards to play. Igor Selin just dangling at the back of that group and fighting to stay in contention and that, how important that would be for uh, Sergei Chernetsky, his Katusha teammate, if Silin can manage to hang on. Another nervous and furtive look over his shoulder from Giovanni Visconti. Well, this is uh, how it played out a couple of years ago when Valverde uh, won this. He, he attacked in this climb, right. one kilometre now uh, to the top of this climb. So. He's still got to go over this climb. It does look as if uh, some darker jerseys are trying to come across. So it does look as if it's uh, Sergio Hanau and uh, Johan Izagheri coming across now. So and that still puts Movistar in a very strong position. Well, you called it, Brian. Eventually, Hanau had to go because the uh, Katusha rider is just not able to do anything and he's used them up, got rid of them. But Johan Izagheri is equal to the job of going with Sergio Hanau. So it could be uh, two on one as they head to the summit and crest the rise with just uh, under 10 kilometers remaining in this race, just over nine in fact, 9.4 kilometers according to the road book will be what's left in the Grand Premio Miguel Ingerain when they hit the summit of this climb. Will uh, Visconti still be with them because Sergio Eno has absolutely raced across this gap without any apparent difficulty. Jan Izaguirre, no problem staying with them. So uh, the group now whittled down to a select group of three but still Katusha trying to chase behind. Uh, what sort of a gap will they have when they hit the summit? Still a few hundred metres to go. Yeah, the questions were, were asked of uh, Katusha, and that's why they weren't riding. They didn't have the uh, the best two riders that they thought in that uh, front group of 11 when it, it did go away. They were up to it. They went with it uh, over the first category climb, but unfortunately, that's why they weren't uh, asked to do any work. And now you've got uh, Chernetsky, number three, and uh, Moreno Moser. So you've got three with two behind, and Unfortunately, Moreno Mosa, these two riders still in and Bilbao will um, probably hook up to have four, but I don't think the firepower is there to bring back uh, Izagiri, uh, that's Jan by the way, uh, Visconti and um, Sergio uh, Henel. Any cars behind, no sign of any bike riders for a little while. 16 seconds uh, they're showing for the three riders up front. And Moreno Moser chasing behind. He's got Sergei Chernetsky for company. Three, chased by two. As now, Visconti has the honor of leading them across the top, the first man to fire, and uh, Visconti given the honor and given the job. As uh, Zagir surprises everyone, certainly surprises Sergio Eno by going for it. Visconti's able to respond, which is good news for Zagir on the assumption that uh, Sergio Eno is able to close that one down. He is, that's a little, little skirmish there, a little surprise attack. That wasn't gonna catch anyone out, but it's a Moreno Moser. Leads them across 18 seconds in arrears. Still an excellent chance of getting back in there. Yeah, it's going to be very difficult uh, because both uh, Team Sky and uh, Movistar know that uh, their best, best options is uh, trying to uh, keep the pressure on, and that's what uh, Izaguirre did. He was straight over the top trying to catch uh, uh, Sergio Hanau in a, in a way. So he'd already done a tremendous amount of work to bring Visconti back, but for me, Visconti is the, the big danger in here. And, but they cannot, he's going to attack straight over the top. They cannot just keep on keep going like this because at the end of the day, these riders are only 21 seconds behind. If they start attacking each other like this, they have to kind of probably ride together for a few kilometers, stretch out the, uh, the lead and then start attacking each other. Well, Sergio Aina was minded not to chase there for a moment, wasn't he? He hesitated. He can't. He, can't, yeah. he has to. He has to. He can't just sit, uh, sit back with this. If you just hesitate and sit back, it could be all over. And if he gets caught by them, you know, his race could be completely over. So 
Yeah, a couple of bits of attack there. Now a drink. Uh, now they've settled down. They have to keep on riding and help each other, but uh, they, they're content and just attacking Henao. And Henao just has to say to them, well, if you're going to attack me, I'm just going to sit on your wheel. Well, especially going down the hill, it's going to be uh, difficult to get any sort of a gap on them. The See, as again, he's just saying, look, come on, we ride together. Well, why attack me? Why attack me one after the other? Now you want me to ride? No, you know, now I'm confused. You want me to ride with you, or are you going to attack me? So, you know, they have to kind of sort this out uh, between themselves. Well, they've decided that they're going to keep the uh, two on one, and they're uh, working them over as best they possibly can. And Sergio Ana knows he's got to do it. And Ana gets uh, his nose to the grindstone and realizes that he's got to close another gap and this is going to continue all the way to the line there's no doubt about it they're not going to make it easy for him well these uh, four riders behind are uh, riding well together and if these can continue to uh, attack each other these four riders can come back and and has every right to say well if you're going to attack me then you could be losing this race as much as uh, i am well at this rate uh, they're going to end up dropping visconti does seem a little bit fraught, a little bit frantic, and only 15 seconds to the group behind, which uh, looks altogether more fluid and more coordinated. The and thing is, I would not want to bring Marino Moser to the finish here, so they have to help each other at this moment. A little bit of frustration indicated uh, there by Jan Izagir, but perhaps he's uh, contributed to the mounting frustration by their efforts to try and work over Sergio Aino. The two Movistar riders up front, Visconti and uh, Izagir, with Sergio Aino for company, and now the two Katusha riders behind. Chernetsky is uh, number three, Cillian is number six on the front of this group, and they've got Bilbao and Moreno Moser for company, Moser from Team Cannondale. Still, they have to ride, and I don't think that uh, Sergio Eno is going to be in any mood to go around and contribute here. And who would blame him? No, it's uh, it's in the balance now. Ten seconds. Um, if they start messing around, they're looking around in front. Um, you know, they could combine uh, together uh, to come uh, to the front again and make it seven. And I don't think uh, Movistar or Sky would actually want this to happen. Um, you know, they should be keep keeping cars, motorbikes out this gap because that could be make the difference uh, if these motorbikes uh, get in the way and, and help out because it's still in the balance now. It's reaching out to about 14 seconds. I think Visconti realises he's looking behind. He doesn't want these riders to come back. Well, his gear has gone again. He's not hanging around. And uh, Visconti was going to struggle to go with this once. It's going to be one-on-one, -on -one, and that's uh, probably good news for Sergio Aino because no, he now he knows he can uh, work with uh, Jan Izagir, or can he? Can he possibly trust him? Sergio Aino sees that uh, Visconti is struggling behind, and that's good news because now he's on equal terms in terms of numbers uh, with the Jan Izagir of Team Movistar. Movistar with such a great record in this race. And they supplied so many of the top uh, top ten. And now it's uh, Moser trying to get across the gap. Visconti, will he be picked up by these riders behind? And uh, Chernetsky, after what great work by uh, by uh, Cillian. Visconti needs to go with this um, because this is a danger. If um, Chernetsky and uh, Marino Moser get across here, uh, then they are they are a big danger. I've said this all along. Marino Moser is a, a danger. You don't want to bring him to this uh, this finishing line. Henao is in a good place at the moment. I'm not sure Jan uh, Izagiri is. I think uh, they should have combined a little bit better together, got over this climb and played out the tactics in the last few kilometres because it's still in the balance now. Well, Moreno Moser in the green of Team Cannondale. Oh, he's ever so close now. 11 seconds to those two riders up front. And Moser, former winner of Strada Bianca, remember, and it has a not dissimilar finish in terms of uh, quite a steep rise up to the finish line. Not a long climb by any means, but one that a rider of uh, his calibre can certainly manage. So too can Sergio Eno. Jan Izagir knows all about this finishing hill. Second 12 months ago, how dearly he'd love to uh, get his arms in the air and take that victory. The gap increases by a few important seconds and uh, motorbike still in the gap. So opportunities perhaps for the riders behind to get across. Now there's a little bit more cooperation between those two. Visconti naturally is not contributing uh, at the back after his efforts. Bilbao in the uh, dark green of Caja Rural 
is knows all about uh, top fi 10 finish. He'd like a bit more than that. Chinetsky just in front. Cillian has managed to make it in again for Katusha in red. Number six, he's driving along in the front and doing what he can with what's left of his energy. This is fascinating now. It does look as if uh, Sergio Hanau and Jon Izagiri are combining uh, together at the front. Uh, the person getting the easiest right is uh, Visconti. But of the two of them in the front, it looks to me as if Sergio Hernal uh, looks like the strongest. But we go over the top of this climb, still the pressure on Katusha. They're the, you know, the riders that have had to do very little in this breakaway so far. Bilbao still in there uh, for uh, Kaharu Al. But um, I'll tell you what, if they can bring Visconti back, then he's not out of this uh, one bit whatsoever. Visconti's not riding at the back, and uh, he's getting a little bit of uh, recuperation opportunity to get a bit of a breather as Sergio Ana hands on the tops perfect 90 degree angle and piling on the pressure as probably 90 degree angle in his elbow I should point out Jan is gear with the green helmet and the dark colors of Movi star the Spanish rider leading the Colombian the thing is um, Declan they had two Movistar riders with one sky there if they'd uh, instead of attacking each other if they'd have stayed together you know in the last few kilometers then you start playing the one two and, and tiring out the you know the tactics come in but because they started you know attacking each other um, straight away that means that Visconti wasn't able to to stay with them um, so it's now one against one when they could have had and I think um, you know two against one but you know that's the way they, they played the tactics, and um, yeah, I think at this moment Sergio Hernal looks uh, stronger than Jon Izaguri. So 3.4 kilometres ago, it's going to be a tense final because they have to keep riding because this group is only 16 seconds behind them. Oh, what a day's racing we've had so far. 12 riders out front initially, uh, swelled to 14, and then they were caught within uh, 65 kilometres of the finish day. Picked up by a select group, which included some of the uh, most of the leading teams. And they've all been whittled down now to a group of two out front, chased by five. Looking a little bit better for those two riders out front inside the final three kilometers of the Grand Premio Miguel Indurain for 2016. As Sergio Enau, uh, accompanied by Jan Izaguirre of Team Movistar, head towards the base of that finishing climb inside the final kilometer, heading towards the uh, town of Estella. That's where that final kilometer hill is. Izaguirre behind, just tightening up his shoes. Once upon a time, it would have been uh, toe straps. Uh, Sergio Heno in front of him continues to pile on the pressure and consolidate this gap of 18, 19 seconds. And uh, Moreno Moser has a little look around and looking for a little bit more help from Bilbao. And these riders, I think, are thinking about the finish. They're thinking about how they're going to ride that finishing climb, and they can't afford to do that at this moment. Yeah, still only 21 seconds. If I was Jon uh, Izaguirre, I would, I would say Sergio here now, so that you now, because I've got Visconti behind, so you know, I'd, I'd heap the pressure on Sergio here now, but it looks as if he's uh, he prepared to ride, and Unfortunately, in that last climb, it did look as if Sergio Hanau was the uh, was the strongest. But um, one against one now, man against man, uh, flick of the elbow from uh, Jon Izaguirre from now on. Um, if I was him, I would just sit on the wheel and just you know try and uh, play a little bit of the waiting game because uh, I don't think these riders behind will uh, manage to come back inside the last uh, kilometre. On the outskirts of the finishing town. And just heading towards this, uh, past the bullring. Empty today, everyone out watching the bike race, as well they might. And now, side yeah, by right. side, and looking, they're using up what they've got. 27 seconds is what they're indicated, hitting this uh, final climb. So I suppose uh, they do have a little bit of time to just think about what they're just about to do, because it is going to be an act of supreme violence to their personal being, uh, because uh, Sergio Enau, sitting on the wheel of uh, Jan Izagir. Who's going to fire first? The early skirmishing on this climb, 7% at this point. But still a way to go, 800 metres, and that's going to feel like a lifetime, especially as they climb what is a, a relatively easy rate for these riders. 
Still 29 seconds, the gap is going out as uh, I suspect something similar is prevailing behind. The riders behind perhaps uh, resigned to their fate, racing for a position on the podium. These two thinking only about who's going to get the victory. Isagair in front for Team Movistar. Remember, he was second 12 months ago and he's leading the Colombian. Sergio Enao of Team Sky. Yeah, coins are looking behind by Izaguirre. He's waiting for this attack from Sergio Hanau, and it's going to come. It's definitely going to come, but, you know, if I was uh, Izaguirre, I would have let uh, Sergio Hanau uh, lead uh, from the front. You know, he's got uh, a teammate behind here in Visconti, but uh, I'm not too sure that uh, Jon Izaguirre is, uh, you know, being tactically astute at this moment because the attack is going to come from behind from uh, Sergio Hanau. It's coming any moment now behind there's a similar game of cat and mouse with uh, Cillian, who uh, one would expect isn't going to be the stronger of the two Katusha riders. He's left to lead them into the base of the climb. And uh, Izagir, only well, wants eyes in the back of his head right now. Looking over his right shoulder. Sergio Eno, surely going to go left any second now. And there it goes, there is the attack, and it's just a little uh, phony war. It continues. He's trying to push Izaguirre into going first, and it's worked. And if he can find a way past, it's a nice tactical play by Sergio Eno. We're inside the final few hundred metres, and this is going to be a gunsling all the way to the line as uh, Jan Izaguirre leads them through the final couple of turns. Has Sergio Eno got anything left inside the final 50 metres? Jan Izaguirre is going to lead them to the line. Is he going to hang on? Sergio Eno gives it up because Jan Izaguirre has taken the victory. He fired first, and he had what it took. And Team Movistar get another victory in this race. And Jan Jan Izaguirre improves on his position from 12 months ago to take the victory as a third across the line. Moreno Moser proved that he does have a great finishing sprint up the hill. Great uh, performance too from Visconti to finish in fourth place ahead of uh, Czernetsky. But Jan Izaguirre, and what a great uh, game of cat and mouse between these two riders inside the final kilometre because, well, Sergio A now looked like he was the stronger of the two riding to the base of the climb, but Jan Izaguirre knew exactly what he had and he fired first and uh, with the greatest effect to take the victory. Nicely played. It was nicely played. Um, you know, looking at it now, um, he took it on from the front. He knew what the finish was going to be like, very difficult to pass. And when um, Sergio Henao tried to come, you know, he wanted to take it on. I just thought that he, uh, he you know, the attack was going to come from behind. It never came in time and um, you know, when we're, th we're talking about tactics, he could have relaxed a little bit, manoeuvred um, uh, Sergio now in front, and then, you know, came from the, the blind side. But at the end of the day, he knew this finish. He knew how twisting and turning it was. Gave uh, Sergio now the longest route uh, to the finish. I think that was the difference between the two of them. And hats off to Ioana Zagheri. He took it on, and, uh, you know, we questioned their tactics, but at the end of the day, a win's a win, and uh, respect to the Movistar team and Jorn Izaguirre from taking it on from the front. From a, he looked to be a very good uh, Sergio Henao. It just shows you how much it meant to them. This is the, one of the local races. The, not, you know, it's not too far away from P Pamplona. After finishing uh, in the podium last year without a win, that's a, a huge performance from uh, Jorn Izaguirre. I feel sorry for uh, Sergio Henao. Team Sky rode well today, but Movistar were uh, just the, uh, the better team in the day. Well, Peloton making their way up the final climb now, and in there somewhere presumably is Adam Yates. Will he be going for the the sprint? He's a frustrated man. Uh, plenty of uh, excitement in there. The local Nteka M M R Dominican cycling team also involved in the finishing sprint. Cause that will be Yates on the front now. I did say about um, Moreno Moser, 13 seconds in the end. You know, started this climb, uh, what, 30 seconds, 29, 30 seconds behind. So he has got a, a, a good, good finish. This is uh, the uh, young British star Hugh Carthy finishing there. So uh, Hugh Carthy, a good ride in Catalonia, finishing well in this uh, race today as well. Yeah, ninth in uh, Volta Catalonia last week really announcing himself on the big stage. Hugh Carthy, another great result for him. Another Cajaral rider, uh, one of their... Um, they, they're from this uh, region as well, so nice to see them getting up there. Oh, what a great ride, though, by Jan Izaguirre, 27-year-old Spaniard, first uh, in the Tour of Poland, won on GC 
in 2015, fifth on GC in Paris-Nice just a few weeks ago, and now has added another considerable title to his Palmares. Victory in the Grand Premio, Miguel Indurain, as the riders continue to make their way up the hill. This is Figueredo of the Radio Poppet Arbo Vista squad. And he knows he's been in a bike race. Large and appreciative crowd at the finish at the uh, Basilica. Nueva Senora del Poi, built in the 1950s. It's probably one of the newer buildings around here. Adam Yates uh, finally rides somewhat disconstantly to the summit of the climb. Very little interest for him in uh, sprinting for the minor positions. Man of his caliber. Well, it was only really first that matters. Well, Team Sky did uh, great work today, and they can be satisfied with that. Uh, Xavier Zandio, of course, was in the breakaway, uh, so a successful ride for him. Successful ride, too, for Sergio Einau, but at the end, didn't quite have enough to get past Jan Izagir. That is Izagir that takes another famous victory for Spain in the Grand Premio, Miguel Indurain. It's the 60th edition has uh, gone off absolutely perfectly. If you're a movie star fan. And he's the final moments inside the final 200 meters. And he's again knew exactly what to do, didn't he? He knew how much it uh, wound and twisted and how narrow the road was. And how once he controlled the inside line into those final turns, he was going to make it physically that much more difficult for uh, for Sergio Eno to get around him. Superb finishing sprint and uh, frustration once more for Sergio Einau. Tour of Flanders, of course. Uh, it's a great weekend of cycling here on Eurosport. Tomorrow at uh, 2 p.m. CET, that's uh, 1 p.m. If you're in uh, Ireland and the UK. Who's going to take the ronda? Well, who knows? We know who has taken Grand Premio Miguel Indurain for 2016. It is Jan Izagir. Well, it's been another great day of racing in the Spanish countryside. It's been uh, my pl pleasure to bring it to you. From myself, Declan Quigley, and from Brian, it's goodbye for now.